Common double strategy mistake number two. You're at the net and you have an overhead or a high volley, a ball that you're thinking you should crush it, you should end this point, and you end up hitting the ball back to the baseliner. Guys, it's Pete, your totally obsessed tennis coach. Now, if you enjoy today's video with this TennisCon All-Star, make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you how can, you can get your hands on TennisCon 7, 100% free. So enjoy today's lesson and stick around to the end of the video. Hello, my name is Ryan Reedy, founder of 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video we're going to cover five common double strategy mistakes and how you can avoid them. Mistake number one, standing in the wrong place to start the point. Super common for the server, the server's partner, and the returner's partner to not be standing where they should be. When I see servers standing in the wrong place, I typically see them standing too close to the center as if they are a singles player. When you see the server's partner standing in the wrong place, they're usually too far off to the side, oftentimes standing with their outside foot on the singles line. And you'll really see the same thing from the returner's partner, standing too far over and just leaving the center of the court open. Let me show you what this looks like on court, and maybe you'll recognize this with yourself or some of the people you play against. Now here's how you fix these mistakes. If you're the server, stand farther out wide. I recommend about three feet on the inside of the singles line. If you're the server's partner, stand directly in the center of the service box. Just think of drawing an X and you stand directly in the center. You can still cover the alley, but this way if a ball comes close to the center, you can poach it. If you're over here, you're not gonna get any poachable balls and nobody would even hit down the line anyway. So you don't even need a racket if you're standing out here because you're never gonna hit the ball. So you gotta be in the middle of the box and you can actually dominate at the net. And when you're the returner's partner, rather than worrying about the alley, worry about the middle. So stand either in the center of your service line or even slightly farther over. But this is what the point should look like at the beginning. Now let's check out the correction. Common double strategy mistake number two. You're at the net and you have an overhead or a high volley, a ball that you're thinking you should crush it, you should end this point, and you end up hitting the ball back to the baseliner. When you're at the net and you have a high ball, and you hit it to the baseliner, you're hitting it to the person farther from you. Said another way, you're hitting it to the person with more time to react. So the chances of winning the point go down for you, and they end up prolonging the point and you squander that opportunity. Here's what it looks like, it's super common, this is what it looks like on the court. Now to stop making this mistake, you just have to remember a simple saying. Hit the ball to the opponent who is standing where you are standing. When you're at the net and you've got a high ball, you don't want to hit to the baseliner. As the net person, when you have a high ball or a ball that you can hit aggressively, you aim for the person who is standing where you are standing. You aim for their feet, you're not trying to hit the ball hard at them and hurt them, right? So don't aim for their face, just aim for their feet. But you're gonna hit the ball to the person with less time to react. Now you might be saying, but Ryan, why wouldn't I just hit it right through the middle? Here's the problem. Oftentimes your opponent, this player, when you have a high ball, they'll be thinking, ah, they're gonna aim for the middle. And when you hit through the middle, they go get it and then they prolong the point. So rather than even giving the person farther from you a chance to get that ball, just aim directly for that player's feet. They will have no time to react and you will win the point. Here's how that point should go. Common double strategy mistake number three, not moving left and right with your partner. See, you and your doubles partner are trying to cover 100% of the court, 100% of the time. That means if where you're standing stays, your partner's covering 50% of the court and you're covering 50% of the court. But throughout the point, sometimes the baseliners especially get pulled off the court. So let's say your partner serves and the returner hits a sharp angled return. 
pulling the server off the court. Well, remember, we need to cover 100% of the court 100% of the time. What percentage of the court are you covering? Still 50%. What percentage of the court is your partner covering? Less than 50%. Let's say they're covering only 20% of the court, you know, for that next shot. Well, 50 and 20, that only equals 70. So there's 30% of the court that's gonna be wide open. Here's what this looks like. It's so common that you'll see the net player not move when the partner gets pulled off the court. Now the solution for this is to simply move left and right with your partner like your windshield wipers on the front of a car. So if this is you and your partner serves, the returner hits a great cross-court return that pulls your partner off near the doubles line or even farther, you need to slide with them. You want to move with them so that you can help cover up the middle, some of the court that your partner is unable to cover once they hit the ball back and it takes them a little time to change direction and then get back in. So move with your partner. That way you don't leave the center wide open for your opponent to hit into. Move over a little bit, then if they hit it here, you can come and get it, or maybe they'll try to hit behind you and it's a much more difficult shot and you can force them into an error. Here's exactly how this should look. Common double strategy mistake number four. You hit a lob, over your opponent's head successfully, and you don't go to the right spot. Here's what I see all the time. Let's say the baseliners are in a cross-court rally, and this player, let's say this is you, you hit down the line, and you force this team to switch, and these two players, the person who lobbed you and your partner, Put yourself in this position where this person might get really tight to the net, the lobber stays back. The reason this is a mistake is we have to think about what type of shot is gonna be hit by this player. Remember, they're in a little bit of trouble. You just hit a lob back deep into the corner. This player is scrambling to go get it. This player switches. What shot is this player gonna hit? They're most likely going to hit a lob. Well what shot do you want to hit off of a lob? I hope you're saying overhead. You are not going to hit an overhead by staying behind the baseline. And you're not going to hit many overheads if you get really tight to the net. See, your opponent has to hit an awful lob for it to come anywhere near you at the net. And you would never want to hit overheads from behind the baseline, right? Unless you let the ball bounce first. And again, you're squandering the opportunity to hit an aggressive overhead. Here's what this looks like because it's so common when you see a lob go down the line and these net players have no idea where to go. I can't wait, by the way, to show you what the solution is. Now the fix for this is to simply think to yourself, when you successfully lob over your opponent's heads and doubles, put your toes on the service line. When you successfully lob, put your toes on the service line. See, we know that when we lob and we force our opponents to switch, that we're most likely gonna get this person in trouble. I mean, why else would we lob? We're doing it to get this person in trouble. The ball bounces, then goes back high again. Maybe they're at the back fence and the ball's up above their head. So they're gonna pop a ball up. And remember, we wanna hit an overhead off of that shot. Well, the best chance to hit an overhead is if we put our toes on the service line. See, when the lob is hit and it's a weak lob, you can always run forward. And then where should you aim? Think mistake number two. You wanna aim for the person closer to you. So aim for that player, not hitting hard. We're just aiming at their feet. If they hit a medium lob, the ball's coming right to you. And even if they hit a great lob, you can still take two steps back and hit an overhead. See, putting yourself on the service line, putting your toes on the service line, the, the more specific you are about how you place yourself, the more likely you're gonna do it. Putting your toes on the service line gives you the best chance to then hit the overhead toward the net person and win the point. This is what it looks like.
Common double strategy mistake number five. You're at the net and you get lobbed and you switch staying at the net. Let me show you what it looks like. Let's say this is you and your partner serves and the return is a lob down the line. Now remember, your partner is in trouble running that down, especially if it's a bouncing ball that's up on their backhand side, they're gonna hit a weak ball. The mistake you don't want to make is staying up at the net when you switch. When you switch and you stay at the net, especially if these two players know to go to the service line with their toes on the service line, you're a dead duck. Because when you stay at the net and your partner's in trouble and they lob the ball up, guess what? That ball is coming right at you. You're now giving them a target to aim toward. Let me show you what this looks like because this is one of the most common ways that players hurt their ability to win matches and I can't wait to show you the fix. Now the solution for this is so simple. Your partner serves, the opponent lobs down the line, your partner goes and gets it, you need to move back diagonally. I'll tell you either move to no man's land or if you wanna go all the way back to the baseline, that is fine. The reason is remember, we're expecting our partner to lob the ball up. So when they lob the ball up and let's say this team does exactly what they're supposed to do and they go to the service line, when that ball is lobbed up, now when they're hitting an overhead, they have nobody at the net who's just sitting there waiting to get pelted by the ball. Now you both have time to react to their overhead. Are they up at the net and you're on the baseline? Sure. Is it easy to win the point in that situation? No, but it's a heck of a lot better than staying at the net like we saw and just getting pelted with the overhead. Now when the ball comes to you or goes to your partner, you now have plenty of time to react and you can continue the point. Here is what it looks like. So fix these five common double strategy mistakes and there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this. Is that not a great lesson? Now I have 40 more amazing lessons like that with the best coaches on the planet. These are master classes you're not gonna find anywhere else on the internet. The event is called Tennis Con 7. You can get free 48 hour access to the event right now. I usually only open this up once a year in October, but since you're watching this video, you can get your hands on it right now by clicking in the card section or the description box below. So I've got a preview for you actually. If you don't know what Tennis Con is, it'll give you a better idea and it all looks awesome to you. Make sure you sign up for free.